Welcome to our Sister Wives Rewatch, Season 6, Episode 16, Browns in Crisis. Let's all kill truly. This is a difficult, difficult episode. Really, it really is. Yes. Um, I cried during it. I was a mess. I was thinking about my little baby when he was that age. It's incredibly difficult to watch. When he broke his collarbone and had two oh. black eyes. Gosh. Oh, he had an accident and I just, to this day, thinking about it makes me ill. Um, anyway, we are, uh, we're going to recap it. I don't really want to. I don't think anybody enjoys discussing this episode because it's so sad. Um, we took a lot of information. There's a lot of questions in last week's episode about the timeline. About like, well, didn't, this, didn't you know, Christine take a week to send Truly and this and that. So we did a really, we tried to do our best that we could at nailing down any facts that happened. It's a little fuzzy. They A lot of statements were very vague. A lot of them were said in interviews without a lot of references so it's hard to tell like what are they referring to and stuff like that so we'll we'll try to figure try to figure it out additionally this is the episode where leon goes off to college and mary a bajillion gold stars because mary's like no um cody you can't come with us i know you were going to come with us but you can't truly sick and in the hospital and it's very very serious so like a million gold stars to mary to be to like putting down her foot about that. Um, additionally, there's a um, going away party, which we saw none of, which kind of makes sense. Uh, this took a lot, this this whole episode, I'm glad it was just one episode because it was hard enough to watch, let alone, like forever. let alone if they had spread it out over several weeks because Truly was in the hospital for much longer than I thought. So let's get into the episode. I'm not expecting a particularly long episode, but it's, it's a tough one, so maybe we'll all just zoom through it. So... What we have right off the bat is that Christine and the wives were in San Francisco. They never said how many days, but as near as I can tell, it was like one day up, two full days, and one day back, maybe. Um, it was hard to tell. It did. We know that there was definitely a day shopping where all just Robin tried on clothes. Very bizarre. And then the next day, they did like, and then they did, um, uh, then the other wives tried on clothes, and then they... And at some point we saw is like 289 miles to San Francisco. I don't know if that is like leaving Vegas or is that halfway through their trip. So I, we really don't know how long she was in there. But she explains that when they got back from the trip, we took Truly to the doctor. And I don't know if that's like a literal her and Cody took him to the doctor. It's very likely. Whether that was sort of like last week when we decided the dog needed to go to the vet. And someone asked what happens and we take the dog to the vet. John actually took the dog to the vet. Because I had I had a client during that time, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but it, that said, we took him to the, the I almost said to the vet. <laughs> we took them to um, uh, to the doctor. The the pediatrician said it's just the flu. Just keep her home and hydrated and stuff like that. Um, and then they left. Christine left Truly with Aspen because they had to do the flower ceremony for the commitment ceremony that's coming up. And it was very odd to me because they're having a big party. They're getting flowers. I didn't think it needed an explanation, but we got like a three-minute explanation of why they needed flowers um, and the significance of the flowers. And I was sort of like... We don't care. Well, first of all, I, I, you still didn't prove to me why you need flowers at the commitment ceremony. But I also don't care. Like you want to have a, right. you want to have flowers, have flowers. You want to have streamers, have streamers. Like it's not that big of a deal. So it was really odd when they were like, "Well, let's explain it." And I was like, well, "Who cares?" So what what is interesting is that Janelle had a lot of opinions about the flowers, and everyone acted like this was the weirdest thing ever that Janelle had an opinion on um, on on the flowers. Um, what what is interesting is that allegedly, according to Reddit. Uh, Janelle has recently, Janelle Brown has recently filed a business license for like a cut flower business mm -hmm. in Flagstaff. I don't know how to search for these things, so I don't know if that's true or not. I took a screenshot, I meant to look it up, and it was I was exhausted all weekend, so I didn't. But <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny that we watched an episode where she was like, I know, it really surprised me too how invested I was in the flowers. And everyone made a big deal about how she must have, you know, she even made a joke about temp maybe I temporarily left my body because I was really into the flowers and stuff. But good for Janelle. 
Um, I know that that's, it seems like gardening's become an interest, bigger and bigger interest as time has gone by. Because now in real life, it seems like she's much more into it. interesting. So then it's a very typical, the flower lady saying, I have never met a polygamist, but if it works great for them, hey, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing when you have more wives. And it was kind of like, I get it. There must be some sort of like, law. have to say something, I guess. Everybody's got to say it. So then they go to the cake place because they need cake. And I tell you, every single time they design something, and I, th I this is across the board, almost all of them, um, not great. That's why I think it was really smart when Mary had a, a professional interior designer design her um, carriage house that we saw in season 18. Because he at least seemed to have some great taste. But I tell you, right off the bat, every time they design jewelry, design jewelry, which they've done multiple times, Robin has done it, Cody has done it. They design dresses, the dresses that I think, I think it's for the commitment ceremony. We'll see. Also kind of were hideous, like not, just going to tell you, not their strength, which is fine. I, it's also not my strength, which is why I would go to someone I really, really trusted and then be like, I'm expecting you to do most of the work. So he's got this great idea. Great. Wonderful. Great idea. He wants to do a tree. He wants to do a 3D shaped cake boss style cake. Um, of a tree three foot high and of course immediately I said those cakes are all novelty most of the times they're a no I don't know. most of the time they're they're rice crispy treats covered in fondant which is fun like if you watch cake boss or any of those I, I, I haven't watched a lot of them but I've seen enough to know after you watch like the third episode you go oh I get it they form stuff on a wire thing with platforms, and they use a bunch of, uh, and then they have, so he wants to do this 3D cake, three feet tall, to feed, how many people did you say? He said 500. Okay. So they were like, yeah, that's $8,500, which is, by the way, for reference, an entire year of schooling for Logan <laughs> at UNLV. Jeez. To compare the numbers from a few weeks ago. So Schooling, cake, come on. Yeah. So anyway, they... Um, they go... They, 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 I, I got up and walked away to get a snack. But they decide that maybe they won't do the UNLV year of school cost for a cake. They'll do... And it's just kind of funny because it's kind of like, you know what people really want in a cake? It tastes good. You know what? You know what you really need in a 3D sculptured cake if it's not Rice Krispie treats? Something so tough you can use it as right. as building material. Cuz even when we watch um the Great British Baking Show, their 3D cakes are like this tall. Cuz they have to and a lot of times they collapse. Like that's kind of the half of the fun of it is half usually they finish it and then it goes Aah. and then all the cakes are stodgy. <laughs> with a wet bottom. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, um, Leon's birthday's coming, uh, coming up. This is clearly was the intended par party line. The birthday's coming up. They're going to get Leon a car. Um, Cody's going to drive up to Westminster College to drop Leon off. That is clearly the thing. And then we get an interview from Christine. And what Christine says is, while we were up in San Francisco, truly got sick. And she's not getting better, and it's been five days. Now, I, now, my interpretation of that phrase is, it's been five days since Truly got sick. Which, as near as I can tell, does line up with a timeline, because if they were in, if they were in, uh, they were in San Francisco for two days, and driving back for a day, and then that night or the next morning, Truly went to the pediatrician, then they looked at flowers and cake. Today is now the fifth day. But I think a lot of people took that to mean it's been five days since we came home from San Francisco. Um, I, that's not how I interpret it, but I think that's what happened with a lot of people when they explained it. And she's saying she's still not doing better. Um, but then she saw Truly and Truly's eyes crossed. And McKelty was like, yeah, she's been doing that all morning. So Truly grabs her, doesn't even call Cody. Christine grabs Chris her. Who's, what did I say? Truly grabs her. Oh, sorry. Christine grabs Truly, says, I don't even really bother calling. I go to the pediatrician. They interview the pediatrician. The pediatrician says, as soon as I saw Truly and saw that her eyes were crossing, this is not a pediatrician. This is an ER thing. I wouldn't have known that. Now I know that. Now I know that. Um, that crossing eyes immediately. I'm now, 
we would probably take them to urgent care just because who can get into their pediatrician immediately? Right. I mean, I can't get into my doctor, so we would probably be immediately at urgent care. Uh, we've a, we can't even get into the vet. I know. <laughs> the same day. I know. So let it let alone let alone the pediatrician, but urgent care probably would have also sent us straight to the ER as well. Um, and so immediately goes to the ER, and she's like, I had no idea it was that seriously. They say they're going to Summerlin. We're going to Summerlin Children's Hospital, all of that. She texts everyone. This is another big thing that people brought up, which is Robin telling Cody the wrong hospital. You know I'm no, I'm no Robin fan. It, to me, it looks like a mistake because she, they're getting ready for the party at Mary's house. Cody is sleeping because he was so tired from... Doing nothing all day. Well, from looking at a car. Servicing four wives. Go, looking at a car. And so she goes in there, she wakes up, and she goes, Hey, did you see Christine's text? She's taken Truly to the ER, and she says, I would assume it was cent Centennial. But she doesn't say it was Centennial. And he goes, well, I'll call her and check. And she says, okay, whatever. So a lot of people gave Robin a hard time for saying the wrong hospital. I don't think it was malicious. I, I mean, maybe she should have double-checked before she made the assumption of where it was. Not her kids. She doesn't care. But um, but I, I don't think it's the... I, I, I'm kind of like... You know, if I'm fair, I'm like, okay. So the idea is that she got, she had the flu, she got dehydrated. What's funny is a lot of people are saying over and over again that Cody or and or Christine didn't notice that she hadn't been peeing in a while. But nowhere in this episode do they explicitly say, they say that her kidneys are in trouble, but they never say when that would have started. Like it might have started overnight or that morning. Maybe um, they edited it out like they did the dog punting. You know, that is fair in that I think these episodes used to be two hours. And so it is possible that a lot of the things that people are quoting as having happened are not available in these episodes. Um, so that, that's a very, that's a possibility as to what happened. But um, I'm just, I'm just staying for people, you know. Um, now I'll say here, Cody goes to that. Aspen has a very frustrated so this is so the party's going on and I'm really trying to track who is where and Christine is clearly not there it looks like Cody is there now it is it is kind of a big deal to ch it's one of their ch children's birthday and leaving town and so I get it but there's this uh, interview with Aspen and it's not really clear who or what she is referring to but she says I feel like no one is taking this seriously no one really seems to realize that our baby um, his kidneys have stopped. Now, I don't think that's about her mom because her mom is, we don't see Christine anywhere but the hospital except for one scene where she has come back, she has gotten food, she's picking up, I think it was Isabel, to go back with her to the hospital. So I don't, I don't know whether that was about the fact that, and I think, and I think this is a good assumption, is that this deeply affected Aspen. Um, because prior to this, Aspen had been saying she was going to get married. She wanted to get married really soon. She wanted to have like six kids or four or six kids, had a lot of kids. Now she has not in real life had any kids, which is of course her right. That might be because maybe Mitch just doesn't want to have kids yet. Maybe they want to get settled. But I've always kind of wondered, she is, if you were to talk about who were the three caregivers for Truly in this episode, as near as I can tell, Aspen took care of the household while Christine was gone. There was no indication that Cody does anything ever. Well, that he wasn't going to the other wives' houses. Um, uh, it sounds like Aspen was doing it, and Aspen has this. I mean, it's. It, I would say it's as mad as I've ever seen Aspen. It's not terribly mad, but I'll say it's as mad as I've seen Aspen, because Aspen's just like I feel like no one is taking this seriously. And then they cut back to the party. So I don't know whether that was a reference to the party or if that was an editing choice. So Mary sits down Cody at the party. This is what I'm saying. Mary totally deserves a gold star in this episode because she is like, I know you want to go with us to Westminster. You can't. Not right now. I know that's a bummer. And so they kind of move stuff around. And it is a bummer for Leon, but I think everyone handled it really well. So Christine's still at the hospital. And it felt like the editing is sort of, you know, we see Cody going to the hospital. And we see Cody coming back from the hospital a lot. And it's not super, it sounds like he kind of would swoop in when the doctor was going to be there. 
And he would say things like, I heard truly yell for two hours. But then Christine will describe how she was there all night. And I'm not saying, you know, if you have multiple children, sometimes somebody has to split their time at the hospital. Um, especially because we find out that truly ended up being in the hospital for like 10 days, nine or 10 days. I think it was day nine when they announced that she was coming home the next day. So they were in there a long time and the other kids did need more than just Aspen there. Um, but it was just kind of odd because it seems like we, it's really clear that Christine's there the whole time and Cody's kind of scooting in and out and it's a little weird. So, and then Cody's over there and Aspen calls Cody to update him about what's going on with Truly. And I was a little bit like, what? Okay, interesting. So they've started, this is all outside of my field of view of, of expertise, like it's so far out. They do abdominal dialysis, which is not something I had heard about. And it's different than blood dialysis. Um, they don't want to do blood dialysis on young, young children. They're giving her medicine to try to start up her kidneys again. Cody tells this long story about how he tried to cheer up Cody, um, Truly by saying they're going to have, if she pees and poops, they'll have a pee and poop party. Um, I was a little confused because I was a little bit like, is that something she can control? I don't think it's something she can control. But maybe he was just, but they said it really did perk her up. So, hey, anything that made her feel better. They did say that the nurse says, when we see cases like this, we don't expect them to leave the hospital, which sounds a little bit like a wild thing for a nurse Yikes. to say. But, um, uh, yeah, and then they show Aspen talking about how she's taking care of the household and she's, she's taking care of everyone and everyone's very nervous and upset. And Janelle talks about how I've never seen Christine so stressed, but she's really got this big backbone through the situation. It's been really difficult for her. She's doing really well. They explain that Truly is three, which is wild to me because I thought she was older. Yeah, right. I because you were on season six and she's only three and she was born in season one. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> they were cranking out these early seasons. Um, she's so tiny. Oh, seeing her, like, talk a little bit, I was like, I was, like, crying. John's like, are you crying? I'm like, she's just so little and cute. Because I have, you know... Because she's so little. So, uh, and then they were like, well, could she be out too? And he's like, no, no, it's like more 10 more hours. They doubled the med. You can see Christine's mother has, I don't know if she's been living with her or whether she disappeared. Um, I think that they really, I think the editing really underplayed who was living where when they had extra help. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I mean, no criticism. I'm just was I wasn't sure if Christine's mom was living there or if she just showed up because obviously it wasn't a real highlight of you know she was just in the background. So then they start playing some real funeral music and we're like, what is this music? This is so like so bad. So I think it's supposed to be supposed to be supposed to be like beautiful, inspirational, like worship Mormon worship music. But to me, I was like, oh, it sounds like um, who's the lady who always. Uh, not Melissa Etheridge and not Enya, who's always playing during the um, commercials of, of Dying Dogs. <laughs> and the arms of Oh angels. my gosh. Dad. Um, oh gosh, I, it's right at the tip of my brain. Okay, I'll let, I, this is going to be one of those things I'm going to have one, nine million com comments with everybody telling me the name of the artist that I cannot think. Sarah McLaughlin. And if you manage to type that in before I said it, you get bonus points. So there you go. Uh, I knew I'd remember, um, but they call, they gather everybody up. It's day 10 in the hospital. They call in and she's able to go home. The next day. The next day. And her, it was kind of odd because they were like, so someone says, so, oh, so her numbers are better. And they're like, well, kind of, but we don't have to do dialysis at home. And I was like, Oh, I thought you were like better when you left the hospital, but I guess I guess not. So Aspen is just she she went in to see uh, seeing Aspen with Truly is when I started crying. And she's like, "Hey, you know, you big girl, you're doing so well." And I was like, oh. Um, and Aspen is like, I mean, this is why I feel like she's so deeply affected is that she is so she can't she she's unwilling to believe that Truly's getting better. Because she's so worried about it. And I'm just like, oh, this is so sad. This is so traumatic for her. So she can't really believe it. 
They get everybody to the house. They call to say that she's doing better. She can come home. And then Christine talks about how the first seven days in the hospital were just terrifying, all that. And then they have an all better party for Truly, a pee and poop party. She's so Which is what we're doing after this. A pee and poop party? <laughs> I think we're going to have an ice cream party. Same thing. Uh, anyway, such a tough episode. And what was surprising to me is I've heard that so many people talk about the narrative over and over and over again. Um, it, I mean, you know I'd love to blame Cody for everything. It really seems a little bit of a freak accident. It sounds like Christine, the second she got home, took truly to her pediatrician, which they all said, which is a real pediatrician. Like, I was waiting to see that she, like, took her to, like, a chiropractor or something. But no, it was a real pedi pediatrician, so no, no judgment there. The pediatrician gave them advice. The second she saw something that seemed like not the flu, they took her to the pediatrician. The pediatrician said, go to the ER. They, they, they went to the ER immediately. It just seems like it might have just been a fluke thing. And um, I don't think, um, there's no evidence that they waited an, 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 an unnormal amount of time. I mean, maybe Cody could have taken her in while the wives were still gone. I mean, that's kind of the closest they can come to a criticism. I don't think Robin gave him the wrong hospital on purpose. I mean, maybe she shouldn't have guessed if she didn't know, but it didn't seem, like, malicious to she me. She knows everything, though. Um, and uh, I feel terrible for Aspen. I think that probably was one of those things that, you know, we all have those things that hit us really, really deep, and it seemed like it really, really got to her. And I think I think that's a good thing. I mean, she clearly loves her little sister, and I don't think it's a bad thing. So that is our recap of the episode. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you later. Bye!